think we are about ready to begin. Uh, I want to say good morning and good afternoon to everyone on the East Coast. We have another great turnout for our webinar in the Nimble Lecture Series, Know Thyself, Optimizing Your Company's Performance Management, begins with a good look in the mirror. I'm Jake Eisbart, part of the Nimble Marketing Team, and I'll let you know a little bit about us. Uh, we are SAP technologists and SAP ecosystem thought leaders. Our consulting business, which is 50% of our work, delivers SAP projects, both technical and functional, while our Denver-based SAP managed services, uh, the other 50%, supports both Fortune 1000 and mid-market 24-7 across 20-plus SAP skill sets. While our projects tend to be technical in nature, here are some of our differentiators. Uh, HANA UX uh, Solution Manager. We likewise provide deliverable-based SAP functional business process and PMO services. And here is a quick list of the services that we offer. And obviously today we will be talking about talent management. And here are some of the customers that we uh, that we work with and have worked with. Um, so a little bit of housekeeping before we start. We want to be able to answer as many questions as possible. So if you look in the bottom left-hand corner of the chat box, feel free to uh, ask any questions, and David, our speaker, will answer them um, at the end. Uh, if it's something that you need answered during the middle, just let me know, and we will answer them as we can. Uh, and moving forward, to get a quick lay of the land and some questions that David, our speaker, will be able to answer, uh, we're going to give you just a couple poll questions. So. Our first poll question, it's all performance management, is um, what performance management system are you currently using? This will give David a little bit more information. So are you using success factors? Are you using uh, Workday, Oracle, other, or none? So people are starting to click in right now. I see a couple people using success factors, a couple using Oracle, some using none. All right, and we'll move on to the next poll question. Uh, if you are using a performance management system, are you currently satisfied with your performance management system? And that's just a yes or no. All right, people starting to fill it out. Give people a couple more seconds. All right, let's get this thing started. Uh, our speaker today is uh, Dave Moranti. He is VP of Human Resources here at Nimble. Dave is an accomplished HR and talent management professional with expertise in various disciplines across multiple industries. Before Nimble, he'd held uh, VP roles at both a research and development company and a growing real estate firm. Throughout his career, Dave has been instrumental in cultivating organizational values and cultures that have been recognized locally and nationally, including making the list of great places to work uh, and Inc. 500. And at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Dave. Dave, go ahead and take it away. Hello, and thank you for uh, joining us. I uh, appreciate the intro, Jake. Um, Hopefully today we'll we, if, uh, we'll be able to go through kind of what we did here at Nimble, and, and maybe that'll help provide some of the people out there some ideas on how to uh, implement a performance management process for yourself. So the agenda today is uh, we're going to talk about kind of the in general what I call the performance management problem. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about us and what we went through, what our solution was, and why do we care about any of this stuff. Um, and so again, thank you for giving me the opportunity and uh, I will hopefully give you some ideas. So first, the performance management problem. Uh, I found this, this is actually a video on YouTube. Uh, this kind of sums up where most people feel we are currently with, the, with performance management. Um, you can read through this. Uh, I think it's kind of interesting and, and really is a, is a pretty good summary of, of where the performance management, where most people feel performance management is today. Um, this, this whole idea of uh, it being a difficult challenge is something that I think a lot of us feel. So 
just in general, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about talent management and uh, the different characteristics of talent management. Uh, I've got five different characteristics here, five different parts of talent management. Uh, today, we're going to try and focus more on performance management um, as one of those. Some people call it performance enhancement. Um, and, and this can look a lot of different ways. Talent management practices are, uh, if you were to Google it, you'd come up with all sorts of different uh, ideas and thoughts. Um, but hopefully I've got kind of a, a general summary here that, you know, you think about an employee life cycle, you think about how you acquire some a, a person. Actually, even before you acquire, you're looking at planning, workforce planning. Then you're, you're thinking about how you're going to bring someone on or, or find someone or recruit them. Uh, how are you going to engage and retain that person? How are you going to develop and, and how are they going to learn? And then also a piece of how are they going to know that they're doing well, um, which a lot, which basically falls under the performance management part. So a, uh, a simple Google search for performance management comes up with a couple of different things here, uh, if I think you're, which I think are interesting. Uh, the whole idea of you can see here, get rid of the performance reviews from the Wall Street Journal. Um, and interestingly enough, I think if you had done a Google search since Google existed, this probably wouldn't change very much. This whole idea of getting rid of the performance review has been something that's been out there for for many years and uh, still a lot of debate around reviews. Uh, you know, do they belong in today's, and probably says today's workforce? And then another sentence around get rid of the performance reviews. Um, interesting enough, there's a there's there's the don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, and so I think you've it makes for good headlines to say that companies are getting rid of the performance review, uh, and perhaps they're getting rid of annual performance appraisals on it, and and so, uh, but you know you'll hear about com companies like Accenture and um, and Deloitte, for example, and even Adobe a few years ago. You know, talked about getting rid of their reviews. They do have processes in place currently. Uh, they're just not the, what we would traditionally call an annual performance review. Some statistics around performance reviews, again, painting a dark picture of, of what people think. One out of five employees think their bosses don't even think about their appraisals until they're, they're in the room. Um, again, that's, do, do they actually think that their bosses have the skill set and, and the care to sit down with them and, and really talk through kind of how they're doing. 44% of employees don't think uh, their bosses are honest. Uh, so almost half of the people who are doing reviews feel like their boss is not being honest. That's uh, disheartening. 45% of HR leaders don't think annual performance reviews are an accurate, accurate appraisal. Um, that's, uh, so, you know. Only 55% of HR leaders believe that appraisals are, are, are accurate. And you can start to understand why uh, there's this negative press and this negative feeling around reviews. 8% of companies report their performance management process drives high levels of value. Again, uh, you know, if, if there's a lot of time and effort spent in reviews, and if they're only, you know, 8% of people feel like there's any type of value in that, that's definitely problematic. 58% uh, of managers don't think it's an effective use of time, and 58% of executives believe their current performance process does not drive employee engagement. It's an interesting point as well. I mean, if you think about it, ideally, a review process or a process of, of giving someone feedback um, should enhance engagement over time. And in many ways, and in, you know, six out of 10 executives believe that it actually does the opposite. There is some positive stuff out there. Uh, employees are four times more likely to score at the top of Burson and Deloitte's total performance index when they do uh, quarterly goals, and 15% lower turnover rate for companies who implemented regular feedback. And I think those two last two bullet points are really uh, talking about how having uh, more than an annual review process or, or, more, or a way of, of having a feedback loop that's quite a bit more often than an annual process is uh, likely going to be uh, lead to more fruitful results. So what your performance management system needs most, and this is according to uh, the Gallup Business Journal. 
I like this because it kind of outlines some of the major parts. Uh, I think most people would agree that a, in the ideal world, our nirvana would be your review process is doing all five of these. And so there's a certain amount of goal setting and, and goal setting at the individual level. There's goal setting and aligning goals from individuals to teams to the company goals. There's a feedback process, you know, some type of loop, some type of way of people getting information about how they're doing um, on a consistent uh, basis. There's a development piece as well, and this is the idea of you know, how are people uh, growing as professionals. Uh, a reward and recognition piece. Are we, is there a way that we're compensating people, whether that's base compensation, whether that's some type of variable compensation. Um, and then finally, some type of teamwork, collaboration, communication. You know, hopefully, if you're in an ideal world, that your performance management process is doing all of these, including you know, building a, uh, a sense of engagement, a sense of pride in the work that people are doing. Unfortunately, the statistics that we talked about a few on the previous slide indicate that we're, we're not at this nirvana. For most, most companies are not here. So I talked a little bit, I kind of mentioned kind of where uh, Deloitte's performance snapshot. And I thought this was, this was interesting to show as you know, they've changed their process. And you can see here that um, if you look through these one through four, they're, they're really, uh, they're, they're after the, some of the things that we talked about in the previous slide, this, this idea of uh, measuring overall performance and unique value to the organization. Um, you know, this idea of giving people feedback, a feedback loop, um, you know, the idea of, of knowing how to uh, reward or compensate someone. And so, you know, I'm, this was uh, in an HBR article recently, well, about a year ago, and uh, written by Marcus Buckingham. And kind of, I think it was a, it's a kind of an, it shows a, a way a company has moved to a, different review process. I don't think that they've actually gotten rid of the performance review. They've made this their process. And I think that's an important distinction. So this, this is something that I think will, I will allude to or talk about throughout the rest of the, the presentation. Um, and, and I say core because I think at the core is an understanding of a company's values, purpose, goals, and then for any type of performance process, um, I think for us, we needed a good feedback loop. We wanted clarity on expectations. And these are outcomes that we wanted from our performance review process. Um, we wanted alignment uh, between company and individual goals. Uh, and then finally, we also wanted, you know, are we winning? I, I think that's a big piece um, for a lot of people, uh, especially here at Nimble. This idea of knowing kind of how someone is contributing to the success, not only their success, but the success of the organization. And I like to call it, you know, are we winning or are, am I winning? Are we and I winning? Um, and I think any review process, any type of performance process that you put in place uh, should have these characteristics. And it really should it would be, actually let me rephrase that. It's, not, it's these are I think general pillars that you'll see in successful processes, um, and so uh, you'll hear me talk through these a little bit more as we continue. Here you can see that uh, one size does not fit all, um, and I think this is a pretty in interesting point that uh, I'm going to take you through what we did. Uh, I've, I've kind of talked through a little bit about some, what some other companies have done, but really at the end of the day, it's important to do an assessment of what um, your company does, who you are, what you value, not just what you value, but you know, what, not what's necessarily written as values on your, on your door, but what do you actually, what do you actually value through your behaviors um, and any type of performance process that you put in place is going to need to fit your organization. It's absolutely critical that that happens. Um, I've seen a lot of companies try and uh, slap on a system 
to try and fix their performance management process. But unfortunately, um, that just doesn't work. So a few, a, few, a few key foundational principles, I've kind of talked through these a little bit, unique to your culture, alignment with your values, well understood by your people. Um, the key here is lots of paths to the top of the mountain and choosing the right path for you is really the difficult piece. And then choosing a system that fits on top of that process or fits in hand-to-hand in, in, -hand in that process is another critical part of the, of the entire performance management problem. So it takes us to us and our problem. Um, I know Jake kind of talked through this slide with you already. This is our Nimble's, uh, I guess, our resume. I mean, a couple of things of note here is 14 times growth since inception. You know, we're a high growth company. Um, and probably another important piece is we do a lot of SAP work, hence I'll talk a little bit about success factors in the future of this presentation. Um, we're at 5280, so we're at the we're a mile high. I'm not sure how that plays in, but I thought it was interesting. Um, and we've been around for uh, almost about seven years now, and uh, you know it's, it's 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 we're not a gigantic company by any means, but we are definitely a high growth company. Some of our differentiators, uh, I think Jake talked through this, so I'm not going to talk much about it, some of our services, this is kind of what we do. I think the important piece is that we are a services company. We hire consultants um, who then provide thought leadership to our clients and people use us because we are considered the thought leaders in the areas that we work in. Uh, we have a talent management practice and use our customers. And here's kind of the core of Nimble. So if you remember the critical outcome uh, spreadsheet, or not sorry, spreadsheet um, slide that I showed earlier, this is kind of at the core for Nimble. You know, we are trying to be North America's number one SAP service provider, and then these are our values. Um, and at the bottom, you can see those are our what we call our core competencies, and I'll explain more about those soon. But essentially, it's important to understand that obviously this is what we put on our wall, but behaviors that we have. Uh, we exhibit throughout the, the day, each day, really define these values. Um, and you know, if you're interested in understanding how they work, then you know, please give me a call. I can talk through it with you, but I don't, obviously that's not the, the central core of this presentation. So performance management process. Here's, here's what we had. This is what we started with. Um, about 18 months ago, we had this process in place. Uh, we actually implemented, just so you know, we, we started, we didn't have any process for a while, for many years. And then we implemented this process. And uh, it's, it's, it's a simple process. Manager did a rating. Uh, it was done quarterly, which was, uh, I think, beneficial in some ways. Uh, then you know, all the managers had a, a meeting and calibrated kind of where they were with their people. And then the manager had a discussion with their people on their team. Uh, it was pretty one-dimensional. Uh, very much top down, um, and uh, you know there was little training that happened with the managers. And the one good thing about this process was we did have it, we did do it quarterly, so at least there was some feedback discussions that happened uh, on a consistent basis. Hey Dave, if I can just jump in on there, um, sure. Because I, I do remember when we would do these uh, these quarterly reviews. Um, what, in your opinion, did you find uh, to be the biggest obstacles as far as getting feedback from uh, from the employees? Was it was it just the, the the singular direction? Was it that it wasn't collaborative? Both, actually. I mean, uh, the, what happened is is that the the expectations that were delivered by the manager became the manager's expectations, which are important. But in order to get true buy-in, it's the the process needs to be more collaborative, and I and I think to get true buy-in, you need the employees to also um, have a be a participant in the development of goals, um, and also have the ability to talk about are these, you know, how 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 do I demonstrate these competencies? Because in our case, we do goals and competencies and professional development are the main pieces of our process, and. Uh, having the employee 
help drive that process, I think, adds engagement to the process. Excellent. Thank you. So here's just, it's the next, here's just a picture of uh, what our actual form, it was a Word document. Um, managers basically filled this form out. As I mentioned uh, just earlier that it was, there were three main sections. There was a competency section, there was a uh, tactical goal section, and then a growth and development section. And um, manager rated the person on a one to five scale um, and uh, talked to them about how they met or did not meet the goals for the quarter. And the growth and development kind of got left blank most of the time. Nobody really did anything uh, on that, which was definitely problematic. But, you know, your traditional kind of review process, um, very much driven by the manager. So these are things that we, we actually started hearing certain things about our process, and, and not just started hearing, we actually actively went out and asked people because we were very interested in understanding how do we make this process better. Um, and so these are some of the quotes. And, and the first, first three is really about alignment with how with what I'm doing as an employee to uh, how the company is doing. Um, and you can, you know, if, if somebody within an organization doesn't understand how their role contributes to the success of the organization, that's going to impact engagement. And so uh, that was those three bullet points in the beginning are, were, were extremely problematic, especially as we grew, obviously. When you're smaller, it's easier to understand, and then, but as you get bigger and you have to scale, it becomes much more challenging to have everyone in the company truly understand how their role uh, adds uh, significant value to where the organization is going. Um, you know, there was this idea of ridiculously time consuming. So we, you know, we had a Word document, it was a paper and pencil process. Um, and there was that created all sorts of problems, especially as we got bigger. It was uh, really time consuming for our managers. Um, I don't have a say in my review that's related to the question Jake just asked me about about um, you know what what did people want? They wanted to have uh, more of an engagement and more of a conversation with their manager. Um, and, and you know the other idea of where do I where can I grow? And as I said earlier, we wanted to. We were hearing that the development piece didn't seem that important. As I talked about earlier, being a thought leader is absolutely critical to Nimble's future. And so, if our people aren't growing, or we're not helping them grow, then you know our future is likely doomed. Some of the things that seem to be working for us. I've talked about the formal quarterly discussions. Uh, I think. Just having those, uh, even though our managers didn't have any training, even though our form looked like I, like I showed you, uh, even though it was manager driven, uh, the fact that it was done quarterly at least gave people some feedback on a consistent basis about how they were doing. Um, and so that seemed to be a, a positive. Uh, this idea of having managers uh, meet quarterly to review and talk about the performance of people on their team uh, across teams was also extremely valuable to us because it helped us kind of calibrate across the company, especially as we started to grow and bring in new people. Um, that calibration process, although not formal, somewhat informal, um, put into the minds of each person you know, what we're defining as excellent performance. And so that helped us kind of recognize that and be able to work with people to help them get there. Um, and, and the whole buy-in, and I think our people, our employees really liked, this is going to sound crazy, but they liked to have getting that, that feedback on a quarterly basis. So we had buy-in on a quarterly basis, both from the managers and the employees, which I get for a lot of companies that would be problematic or there'd be some serious change management to get there. So when we looked at, when we looked at our processes, and we looked at kind of what worked for us, and we started thinking about where do we want to go from here. And really, we wanted a more employee-driven process as opposed to pulled through by a manager or HR. 
we wanted people to really want to have feedback um, because you ask people about, and you look at kind of the Gallup uh, Q12, a lot of those questions around, do I receive feedback on a consistent basis? And, um, you know, you hope that your performance process fits into some of those questions so people are wanting those things. And so we really wanted a process that uh, was more of a push from our employees and managers as opposed to a pull. Uh, we wanted to enhance employee engagement. Um, you know, if we if we we go back to some of the statistics around performance management, you can see that uh, most people don't. A lot of people don't see any see the value. Don't connect the value. Uh, if if we're not getting people engaged more in the work they're doing, then we have to consider whether that process is worth doing. Um, because at the end of the day, if, if your people are, are engaged, you're going to you're going to get they're going to maximize the performance. And then we also wanted to add immediate value to operations. How do we show that our process actually adds value to the operations of our company? And so, this idea of adding immediate value, we wanted to align our company goals with individual goals. That that picture that people get where they're hopefully uh, understanding. Um, how their roles relate to where Nimble's going. Clarity on what's expected. I mean, if, if we go back to some of these critical outcomes, clarity on, on what's expected is, is absolutely essential, at least for us and I think for most organizations. And so we really needed to understand how to do that. And then the last piece, we didn't have any analytics. We didn't have any way of knowing, does this process actually add value? Um, are there are there ways to look at kind of the data to understand where we can move forward and do things differently? And you know, with a with a word document, it really didn't have any data to do that. So our our solution basically there was two step process or two steps to our solution. One was a process and one was the system. So here's the here's the process solution and right at the center of our our process solution is the employee manager discussion. This is kind of the core of our review process. We 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 looked at you know, some of the what are the, some of the reasons why people are engaged. You know, we know about why they're disengaged. They're disengaged because they don't have a good relationship with their manager, or that's one of the main reasons why people are often disengaged. But it's also a reason why they're engaged. And so, how do we enhance that employee manager discussion? How do we get that discussion and use a review process that actually makes that discussion richer and better. So we, we actually created, uh, not created, but we, we coached, we, we, we worked with each of our managers on how to have an effective and enriching manager team relationship, including how to have effective performance management discussions. Um, we also um, have, we wanted to be really clear on, on uh, competencies and goals. Um, there's a, we kept the three pillars, the three pillars being competencies, goals, and professional development as uh, important parts of our process. And so um, we wanted each role to have very defined uh, competencies, as well as we created company competencies, which uh, transcend to all of our roles. And then each person's goals needed to be aligned with where the company is. That means we needed some quarterly company goals, which um, we have done and, and then aligned our people with those goals. Hey, Dave. Sure. Uh, quick, quick question about the conversations that you had with the managers prior uh, with setting these up. What were some of the topics or some of the, the bullet points you hit as far as guiding them to having an enriching conversation with the employee? Were there certain topics that you hit on to kind of keep the, uh, the conversation going and, and being mutually beneficial? Sure. Great question. Well, you know, one of the main things that we try and do with all our managers is to have them have discussions informally on a consistent basis. Um, if you're only talking to your people once a quarter, it's going to be very hard for you to uh, build a level of trust where you can have a rich conversation about areas that they need to improve in. Um, and on the flip side of that, individuals need to feel comfortable to talk to their managers about areas that they need to improve in um, and other things as well. So that was one, one piece. So really working with our managers to say, have informal discussions more consistently 
perhaps weekly, biweekly, at least monthly. And then within those discussions, be you know a genuine interest in how that person's doing. You need to come to that meeting prepared. You need to be understanding where this person's role is linked to the team and the company, how this person is adding value, um, not just to your team, but to the organization in general, reminding them you know, how their role fits into the, the big picture. Now, those are some of, the, some of the things that we've talked about. So, um, and then the last piece, just going back to our process, this iteration and calibration. We're, we're really interested in trying to have a, a culture of learning, and uh, it, we needed to be able to look at our process and say, okay, what seems to be working? What doesn't seem to be working? How do we change things? Um, and you know, we're always looking to tweak our process, change it, make it better, and uh, understand kind of uh, what are the pain points? What are the things that can we can improve on? So this takes us to the, the second part of our solution, the system. And so um, we went with performance and goals module of success factors. And you can see here there's the talent management suite that uh, success fact, SAP success factors offers. Is, there's a number of different areas. This looks similar to uh, one of my first slides, which is kind of the, the main parts of talent management. Uh, we went with performance and goals. Uh, there are a number of reasons for that. Um, and, you know, what we wanted, we wanted an intuitive implementation. Um, we wanted ability to, to dip our feet in without co committing to any specific uh, suite. And so we were able to actually implement performance and goals without uh, any other system. Um, and so that was important to us because, but we also wanted to have it be scalable. So if at some point we want to add in recruiting and marketing, or if we want to add in, I'm sorry, recruiting marketing is what the, is what the recruiting piece. Uh, if we wanted to add in onboarding, or if we wanted to add in um, learning, uh, those are all possibilities as we grow as a company. But we started small. We started with the performance and goals piece, uh, implemented that. Um, we also wanted something that had a since that had a, a list of competencies or a library of competencies. For us, this is really important because our review process is a combination of competencies, goals, and development. And so, having uh, a library of competencies so that we can uh, develop and use those companies competencies for our roles was really important to us. We wanted to be able to customize it and. Uh, you know, success factors was one of those areas where one of those tools that was highly customizable. Um, and I've already talked through the streamlined and scalable. Uh, it's, it's an extremely scalable package. Uh, analytics, you know, they provides us with uh, with information about kind of how, not only how our our process is, uh, how whether people are doing the process, but also. You know, what are the areas that seem maybe there's areas for development or growth that we need to look at? And so it had an analytics piece to that. And lastly, it was cloud-based. We wanted a system, a, a prescription, I'm sorry, subscription. <laughs> prescription is one of those things uh, obviously very different. We wanted a subscription um, base so that we could just pay per user, and that was helpful for us. And just in general, here's kind of success factors, what it offers on their, what their performance and goals module offers. Uh, the things that we used is we use the goals cascading, uh, and we can see track goal, we can track goal status, progress. Uh, we've also looked at, we look, we use the goal library. This whole idea of continuous performance management um, has been very helpful for us, the simple feedback and coaching. And then the actual assessments, and I'll show you uh, what we currently have. Um, and kind of the writing and coaching assistant is also something that we've actively used and have gotten a lot of good feedback. So here's a, a sample of, a, of goals for a person on our team. Um, and you can see here uh, the goal name, obviously the metric target, weight, you know, what the status is, and then there's actions here that you can take. And, um, you have the names here are blacked out, but the top 
blackout would be the manager, and then the below that would be the individual. And the manager can cascade goals to individual people on their team. Um, and you know, these this is we've set it up so that there's you know sales goals, internal business process learning. You can set this up any way you like. But what we liked about this, it gave us kind of a record of where people are, what the goals are, and I'll show you in a future slide kind of that you can summarize all these into some analytics or reporting, actually. This is the goal library. Uh, this comes out of the box, essentially, and you can see, in this case, training and development goals, all the different goals in here in this aspect. Um, and so this was helpful for our people as they were developing their individual goals. Here's a, the competency. So as I, as I said a few times, we're, if you think about our review process, it's three, three parts, goals, competencies, and development. And here you can see this, this is a goal library, uh, I'm sorry, the competency library. Um, and the, you can see there's, this is just a piece of what's, what comes from out of the box. Uh, you can add new ones in, you can create new ones, you can change these. Um, and you can see that for us, we have core competencies and they're the ones that are checked here. Um, and that goes, every, comp, every position has those core competencies here at Nimble and then uh, you can choose certain competencies for certain roles. So those competencies can be linked to the roles. Here's an example of, of an actual competency, and this is you know, one of our core competencies, decision making. You can see a description of, of what that is, and you can, we, if, we could go in and change this as we need to. One of the, one of the cool aspects of this is this improve, meet, succeeds. Uh, gives you helps give you language as to what's defined as improving, what's defining as meet, meeting, what's defined as exceeding. You can go into this and and actually change these, move these around. You can customize it to what works for your company. Um, and so this was actually really helpful for us. And then this is what a an actual performance appraisal looks like. You can see their core competencies. One of our, another one of ours is customer focus. And in our case, we kept the rating scale for now. It's one of the things that we'll look at in the future. Um, and in here, you'll see language. Uh, some of this, could, you, the manager can write in on their own. And then there's what's called a, a writing assistant, which I'll show next. Um, and, and this is, you know, electronic form. And our process moved to a you know, employee does a self-review, then a manager review, then there's a discussion, and then there's uh, and a signature, which is basically an agreement. So this is this top part here actually shows your process flow, and this can be changed to do whatever works for you. For us, this we added in the self-review because people really wanted to, you know, it, it was it, it allowed us to have a more collaborative process. And Dave, I have a question about that as well too. Sure. Um, the self-review seems to be a little bit newer to the process. As we were speaking before, the, the, the singular direction of a manager just giving the review him or herself, whereas in this process, uh, the employee is allowed to do a self-review. Yep. What are the benefits you see of that? So the, the, the big benefit is uh, the review is owned, or not, it's, it's, it's a collaboration between the manager and the employee. And so, you know, if, if I come to you, Jake, and say, here's your score, and you're not a part of that, then really it's my score as the manager. But if, but if I say, okay, Jake, let's, let's talk through this. What do you think you're, what do you think, how do you think you did? Let's talk about, you know, the competencies. And you come to me and say, here's kind of where I think I'm at. And then I come back to you and say, it's more of a discussion with you on kind of how you're doing as opposed to uh, before, which is I'm just telling you. So it's, it, it provides you more ownership in the process. And in your experience with that, how, how far apart are usually the manager <laughs> and, the, and the employee? Is the that's a, that's a good, and you know, the interesting thing is a lot of people focus on the exceptions. And so I'd say nine out of ten times the employee and the manager are very close. Interesting. That's been my experience for since I've been doing this. Um, and what happens is we focus on the, the, the one out of ten or possibly two out of ten where they're completely separate. And in fact, if they are completely separate, that's important. Because if, if an employee and a manager are looking at things totally differently, 
then there's that's a that's an area to that's something we want to put a microscope want to focus on because is it the manager hasn't been clear on the expectations is it the employee is living in a fantasy land um, and they don't really understand they don't see themselves in reality um, you know there are all sorts of things that can come up um, in that situation but the the great the good thing is is Typically, if you have that situation, you can get to a solution. You can get you're going to get them closer by having that pro, having that discussion. Absolutely. Great, thanks. So the writing and coaching assistant, you know, this our managers. One of the things we they were saying is that the process took a ton of time. Uh, this helped them with some language. Uh, they can actually click on this, and it goes into this uh, bottom part. You can add more positive, more negative. You can go in and change it. It really provides a template. Uh, some of the negatives to this is manager doesn't really think it through. Um, but on the flip side, and I think the, the positives definitely outweigh the negatives here in that it, it gives the manager and, and the employee, actually, the self-reviewer can use this as well. So it's, it's not just the manager. It's both the manager and the, and the employee can actually start uh, building language that is common across the company. So this is uh, just a brief dashboard of our analytics, or uh, success factors analytics. And this is very simple. This can be much more complicated. I just wanted to show kind of, you know, a way. This this first part, this little circle graph here, uh, is a way of knowing where people are in the process. So it's more of a process uh, report. Uh, we, we can see overall what's the aggregate score across the company uh, because we use a five-point rating scale. You, know, you can use any type of rating scale. You can use not even use a rating scale if you don't if that doesn't work for you. Uh, and then you can see where we are with different objectives. You know, and then the last piece down here is is just uh, uh, looking at each comp the looking at our, some of our core competencies and this could actually be a good way to say okay if if you had a core competency or a competency that was rated really low throughout? Uh, is, it, is there a question around expectations? Do you have to define it differently? Is there training that could be used there? Um, you know, lots of different things that you can consider after looking at some of these numbers. And I want to re repeat that this very simple here. I just wanted to show you just quickly uh, a dashboard. You can change this dashboard around to do lots, lots of different things. Uh, here's a list of our quarterly sales goals. Um, and from our sales team, and, and you can see, uh, you know, how well your team is hitting, not hitting, meeting, exceeding certain goals that you put out as an aggregate for the team. And then here we have just, you know, I listed the competencies that we use here at Nimble, not all of them, but some of them. The ones that are, you know, frequency 100%, those are our core competencies. You can see what our ratings were. You can see that the, if there are lower ratings, higher ratings, or different competencies, and this can be helpful for a lot of things, especially development. So why do we care about any of this stuff? Um, you know, I think for us, uh, or for anyone really, a couple of things to think about. Um, I've kind of gone through uh, stuff that we did. Uh, I think it's important as you think about your own performance process to, you know, are you going to look at a formal or informal or some combination of those two things? Um, what I mean by that is a formal process would, you know, is, is something that you track, you record, you actually have information. An informal may be um, coaching managers to have weekly discussions on, on feedback. I mean, there are many big companies that are just going to more of an informal process, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think that you have to figure out what works for you. How often do you want employees to receive feedback? Again, it's kind of related to the formal, informal. Um, I think, you know, I'm not sure you can have too much feedback, uh, but obviously you have to weigh feedback with time, and so uh, those are two things to consider. Uh, we use a competency goal based plus development based review process. There are a lot of companies moving away from competency based, going strictly goal, going strictly future oriented. There's social media sites that are been used for performance processes currently, um, peer reviews, those types of things, all beneficial. Um, 
again, figuring out what works for, for you is really the challenge. So here at Nimble, these were some of our uh, desired business outcomes. I, kinda, I talked through earlier about um, aligning what individuals are doing with where the company's going. So as a company, we had these, uh, as, and we still have these goals as kind of a net promoter score that's related to our customer service, and so we have a competency also related to customer focus. We have revenue uh, growth goal. We have a net profit goal, utilization goal for us, uh, and individuals have goals. Yeah, individuals have utilization goals, and our teams, our projects have profit and revenue goals. Thought leadership is a, is a big piece, uh, something that it drives us for the future. It's one of our differentiators, and, and so um, you know that's an important part. And so, how do people? How do we define thought leadership at the individual level? And and in in our review process, we've we've done that. Um, and then we have employee engagement measures, both aggregate and at the team level. Um, how engaged are people? And, and is our performance management process actually enhancing or decreasing that engagement? Um, and so what we found is our current pro our new process has, has enhanced some of the engagement scores. So success factors, performance, and goals, it's true supercharged how we manage performance. You know, we've gone from a paper and pencil process to a, uh, I guess, a, an online uh, real business process. <laughs> has given us real analytics and reporting. Uh, it really has given us a place to help show our, our people how we are winning as a company and how individuals are contributing to that winning. And I think we've tailored it in a way that is unique for our culture. And, and I can't, I know I've said that a few times, but you know, that's the difficult part is kind of saying, okay, what's the system that fits with our process and what's our process that fits with our, uh, our core, our values, purpose, operations. Some of the things that we're going to look at next, just, to, just as an FYI, uh, we're, we, we've talked about taking out the numerical one through five scale. Uh, we, we are always looking at redefining our competencies for the roles. Uh, there's a 360 tool that's what that's provided, and we're going to look at using that and seeing how that can be beneficial to us. Um, and so those are some of the things in the in the near horizon. And with that, um, I think I'm going to turn it back over to Jake. I appreciate everyone's time, um, and uh, we'll look at some questions. <laughs>